Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning or good evening. I think we even have some attendees here today from across the pond. So welcome. My name is Stacy Mack from Grasp Technologies. I'm the Senior Sales Director. And we are going to talk about virtual payments today and how virtual payments have changed travel and why your company needs it. I'm going to go through our agenda as we have some more people joining us. And we're going to do some introductions and we'll get started. So our agenda today is we'll talk through our speakers and our on our panel and really talk through also what, why, best practices with virtual payments. We have some fantastic panelists on here that have a lot of virtual payment knowledge and, and are in the thick of using it uh, from a TMC perspective and a corporate account perspective. And really talking through also how it works and really solutions for virtual payment. And then we'll get into our Q&A. So thanks so much everybody for joining us today. As I said, I'm Stacy Mack from Grass Technologies. I'm the Senior Sales Director for Virtual Payment. I've been in travel technology for 25 years, prior working in back office and CRM. And also prior to that, my first job out of college, I worked for ADP in payments. So coming full circle into payments and travel all together. I'd like to introduce my panelists, Chris Singh and Troy Williams. Uh, Chris is the manager of global travel from the Walt Disney Company. Chris, why don't you do a little introduction on yourself? Hi all, um, thanks for joining. Um, I've been with uh, Disney Global Travel for 39 years. I'm responsible for travel and technology, um, the, the, the programming, onboarding, and, um, and managing and administering of Conquer, or Conquer Travel Tool, as well as all, all our tools concerning um, non-employees, such as Shoreway and Grasp. I'm also responsible and have taken the lead in handling virtual payment rollout uh, throughout the world for the Walt Disney Company. Thank you, Chris. And Troy, would you do a introduction on yourself as well? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Troy Williams. I'm the president of Epic Travel Partners located in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I come to you with 30 plus years of experience on the travel industry. I started as a phone agent like most people do and worked myself up to where I am now, including stops as an account manager, um, account custom service manager, and implementation manager, vice president of branch operations. So I've been in the thick of travel from all sides, including uh, starting off with the old faxing of the front and back of a credit card to a hotel to see if that would work. So glad to see where we are now and happy to talk about it. Perfect. Well, I wanted to talk just for anyone on the line that is new to the virtual credit card conversation. And what virtual cards are, are there 16 digit account numbers, CSC value with an expiration date that's used for a single travel or expense. The account numbers are generated instantly for use and preloaded with total available spend. And you can have controls on the card, such as credit limit, effective dates, and locking it to a merchant category code. So really, really assisting in the security around the cards. Virtual cards offer you know, simplified, expedited, and a more secure purchase process. And we're seeing that really have a definite need in our industry, having control and compliance, preventing overpaying and setting controls where and when payments are made, eliminating risk and fraud to the payment, and insurance, ensuring you know, corporate travel policy is followed. Also having efficiency and reconciliation, having a one-to-one -one ratio on the spend and being able to you know, really improve the reporting with having third level data in the reporting as well. So I'd like to talk with our panelists today a little bit more about why they wanted to use virtual payments, whether it's for their own company or in Troy's case, you know, for his corporate accounts. Chris, why don't we start with you if you wanted to talk a little bit about the Walt Disney Company and embarking on virtual payments and what this was going to solve. Um, for the Walt Disney Company, you know, we have had, um, we have hundreds, thousands of non-employees and contractors traveling. Um, before the advent of virtual 
Um, we use the typical BTA, CTA, sending it out by fax um, uh, and emails um, uh, to, to all over the world. Um, consequently, every month we had a BTA or a CTA card that had fraud. So we had to go through the pain points of not only getting a new card, but also changing all the reservations that was booked on that card um, to the new card. So it, you know, fraud was, was, was a big deal. Additionally, our reconciliation, we could not pay that BTA, that credit card bill on time. We were always late because we could not reconcile the charges. Um, um, you know, we, you would get a, a bill from Marriott International Hotels for a million dollars. Had no idea how many reservations, who the reservation was for, or what hotel they stayed in. Um, with the virtual card, um, that solved, number one, the fraud and, um, and, and risk of, 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 the, of the card account. It solved the reconciliation issue. We are now paying all our cards ahead of the, the, the due date because it's all reconciled within the system. Um, we are able to virtually eliminate the need of the, bill, of the billing letter. In some cases, we email it. Some cases, we fax it based on you know, the, 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 the various hotels or whatever technology the hotel is putting into place. But by and large, um, virtual gives gives us if you are willing to invest the time and effort the ability to go end to end full automation for a, a hotel um, a reservation and, and billing structure thank you and troy i'd like to hear from you as well you know what was um the, what did you want to solve what was the reasoning on on embarking on virtual payments for your corporate accounts I think on the, from the TMC perspective, it was it was twofold for us. One of them is, you know, some companies, personally on the publicly traded side, needed to have the control and compliance of travel policy in place. And the, the card, because you can put limits on it, um, it, it allowed them to do that. It also forced the hand of the user to have to use the, the company's tool, whether it be Concur or other OBTs, because the compliance was within that tool, and that's where the virtual card lives. So it allowed them to make sure that everybody was pushed towards that and a higher usage of Concur. So you may normally see 80% adoption rate. Well, when you go to the virtual card payment system um, for your users to stay within compliance, you usually get to 99.9% um, adoption rate by using it. The other is, is that some companies that are on the smaller size uh, didn't want to have to issue cards to everyone that was traveling, right? So it, it was a little easier for them to have the virtual card and not have to hand out cards or, or write checks for advance money where everything would be paid for utilizing the virtual card. So it was twofold for the TMCs, but both work equally as well um, and for the same reasons. Yeah, exactly. I think that all from both of you, great points on, you know, really eliminating that risk and fraud, having that corporate travel policy followed, having better reconciliation, paying bills even ahead of time, think it's all really important points for the audience to take away with. What I wanted to talk a little bit about is, you know, from a grass pay perspective, we found more and more divisions inside of corporations wanting to solve for this, you know, besides the fraud prevention, as we've discussed, um, you know, having this solution for employees that they weren't going to dole out physical corporate cards, a lot of employees that might be on the road a lot, maybe they're driving to the hotel. So this is a perfect solution when it comes to lodging. Uh, you know, we found a lot of divisions that were traveling during the pandemic where a lot of the rest of us weren't maybe traveling because we would get on an airplane, were travelers that were driving to the job that they needed to do. Truck drivers, ferry drivers, construction workers, you know, really, those were a lot of the travelers that were traveling during travel lockdown. And so we saw virtual cards grow in usage in those divisions. Um, also, you know, non-employee travel, we're finding corporations coming back to interviewee travels or new hires so they can come to headquarters and be either be interviewed or get their new um, introduction to the corporation. A lot of the industry is really moving away from direct bills. Uh, the hotels got a taste for virtual cards being uh, getting them paid in, in advance or on time 
rather than a lot of times with direct bills being paid late. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, Chris, from your perspective, what divisions was this solving for on your end? Well, I, actually, I mean, our our travel with our corporate card is practically in every single area of the of the company. Um, you know, we handle you know productions, news, uh, sports, as well as your typical um, in, interviewee um, coming in or contractors. So, so they 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 are spread throughout the company, and um, the, the the beauty of 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 the GrassPay product and the virtual product that we use is that it is can be applied across the wide spectrum of the company, all on the same platform. So so there is no variances between whether it's a sports a sports traveler, a news traveler, studio productions. They're all coming into the system, and as Troy says, bringing them, bringing them, and the various areas into the travel ecosystem, control, um, um, automation, and as well as we are feeding them into the company's reconciliation tool, so that everybody, I mean, and the reconciliation tool is able to feed up to the myriad finance offices that we have across the company. So everyone is looking at the same product. Thank you. I, th I think it's such a great point, you know, when it comes to getting everyone into that travel ecosystem. And you have a lot of guest travelers where you have travel arrangers making those bookings for those guest travelers, correct? Correct. And 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 with, with the virtual, there is no need for them to know a credit card number. You know, uh, they just have to supply the the requisite coding or cost centers or you know or finance which whatever rule we have in place uh, for them to satisfy to use the system thank you troy talk a little bit about you know really the industries uh you know or divisions that you're seeing your corporate accounts asking you about for virtual pay or you're wanting them to understand more about it well i, I, I I think a lot of it too, Stacey, is that like Chris says that we using the virtual card now, especially if you're doing expense of any kind, it eliminates the users having to come back with folios and pieces of paper to, to do their expense side. So I think on our side for the travel side, the users really like the virtual pay system because they're going to reconcile their cars as a company and where the user doesn't have to file an, an expense report except for incidentals maybe which makes it a lot smaller time frame of getting expense reports completed on their end so i think for us we see that the travelers and the companies like the virtual card just because we can do the reporting the reconciliation through through grass pay and it makes it much simpler on the in-house finance team it's a great point. And I think too, there's going to be employees out there that work for corporations that the company isn't giving a physical card to, that they're going to be less apt to using their own personal card because with inflation, with credit lines changing for personal cards and the holidays coming up, we have to be cautious as a corporation of what we're asking our employees to do from a personal card standpoint. So I think for the audience, it's good for them to have that understanding if they are having their employees bring out their own cards for travel, that virtual cards could solve that uh, really easily, especially from the lodging perspective. And, and there are some travelers that out, out there that don't have their own personal credit cards as well. That's correct. Yeah, and we're finding that, you know, this is definitely solving it for, um, you know, maybe some generation you know, wanting to just carry maybe a debit card if if nothing at all right. in their wallet. Well, the, other, the, the, the other thing with the, with, with the virtual, with the product is that it's literally a set up and forget system. So, so um, you know, the cards are automatically issued within the booking. Um, the agents, the agents servicing their call um, do not really have any extra work to do if set up properly and the robot set up to issue the billing letter um, automatically. So there is no um, need for a person to push a button to issue a card. It's done all within the book, all within the typical reservation that you do today. 
Exactly. And also I wanted to talk a bit about acceptance. I know this is a question I get a lot about, you know, acceptance. How is the acceptance we want, you know, for our travelers are going to use this. We want it to be accepted. And I feel that acceptance really gained traction in the last couple of years. I think the pandemic actually lent itself because these ho the hotels were not going to turn the travelers away. And, and like I said, I, we found divisions that were still traveling when many of us maybe weren't, were ones that were on virtual pay for their company. And so I think the acceptance really gained a lot of traction in the last couple of years. I would love to hear your thoughts on acceptance, especially with your experience with grass pay on that. Um, you know, Chris, we'll start with you on that. Well, um, as you know, we I rolled out uh, virtual grass pay about three years now in the US. And um, early last year, mid last year, we, we rolled out to the UK again, as you said, during the pandemic. Um, one of the first, the, actually the first booking for the UK agency was a hotel in Kandahar which gladly accepted and charged the virtual and used the virtual card. Um, to me, that is it. You know, if I, if I can get a, a letter, an automated billing letter on a, 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 a one-time pad, one pad uh, card and a hotel um, that's really not supposed to be that techno, in a, you know, that up on automation can charge the card, then I'm good. So, so, I, the, the, the card is, 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 as far as we are concerned, as far as grass space is concerned, that's fine, you know, which then brings us to the hotel accepting the card or utilizing the card for the payment. But um, I'm, very, I'm very confident that no matter where our travelers go, that system works in terms of paying, um, paying the bill. And Troy, what's been your experience? I know you've brought grass pay on in the last year. Have you found good acceptance for your travelers? Yeah, we, we have. And, and being a person that's that's worked on a multiple stages of, of virtual pay cards over the years, um, the acceptance that we have with grass pay is light years ahead of where we were. And I think you touched on it a bit with the pandemic when we went to touchless everything for a while. I think the, the acceptance helped with that for the for the virtual card because it becomes a touchless process, um, like Chris said. I mean, the integration of it into the OBT, um, issuing the cards in the traveler's name, um, directly delivering the, the authorization to the hotel in the traveler's name, it made it simplified. So when the user or customer steps up to the counter to check in, they're basically just telling them to charge the card that's in the reservation because that's actually all they have to do now. So that's why I believe the acceptance has gone through the roof with grass pay is because you're technically saying it's my card with my name on it. Just go ahead and charge the card that's on file. Perfect point. And that's something like this maybe flow will help the audience understand if they're not currently on our virtual payment solution is that we don't necessarily do a hold card. Uh, if a client would want that, we can, but in most cases, we put the true card throughout the entire experience. We just lock the card to specific parameters around the reservation, and we create the card in a small amount. So if the card is compromised, it, it would be a very small amount, but very rarely is it compromised because it is locked to a merchant category code. And having it be used as a single use being able to do the hotel booking, or we are an instant purchase product for airline bookings uh, from a, a purchase for the hotel for that booking, we'll do the communication and send the communication to the hotel. And then after checkout, the reconciliation will happen and the charge information will come back to us in a reporting. We layer the travel data and the uh, car data together. So there is reporting that is a one-to-one -one ratio. Just wanting to talk a little bit about some of the things that both Chris and Troy mentioned on the communication. We will fax, we will send a secure email to the property, 
And then we also have a communication flow that will show that we're doing with Marriott Properties, but also um, some other brands we are talking with as well. Uh, but what we were talking about in the acceptance is we can place the traveler's name on the virtual card. So if they're checking in, they could show their ID. We will send the communication to the traveler if that is allowed by the corporation. And the traveler would have a copy of the image of the card to show at check-in. So very within process of check-in today of showing a card and showing an ID. Just to talk a little though, a bit about the Marriott property data flow from the SI field, I know, Chris, you were really involved with doing some beta testing for this, but being able to give directions to the hotel from the booking and passing it through to the CRS of the hotel and then into their property management system, I think is a huge win for virtual payment as a whole on every side, not just the virtual payment product side, not just the booker side, not just the traveler side, but also the hotel side. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, I know this was a passion product project for you. So do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, your thoughts on this? Well, 39 years I've been complaining about billing letter. <laughs> okay. Um, not only not only about the actual how to get the letter to the hotel. But we, you had to type the hotel. In, in the days before computers, before you had to type the letter up. Say it again on a typewriter, type the letter up. Then you got to get it to the hotel one way or the other. So we started with Messenger. Then we went to email, then fax. Then we went to email. And, and then we came to a point where we are now at a point where if you ask a hotel, what whether, some people don't even know what a fax machine is. You know, there are young people working in hotels, they don't know what a fax machine, how to load the bit of paper, right? So getting rid of this has been, and I know countless of travel managers have been complaining about this. There have been a lot of third party in, uh, companies trying to get in between the GDS and the hotel and, and just muddling up the, 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 the industry. Using this SI field that already exists in Sabre, that actually people really don't use it anymore because everybody, it used to be you would say VIP, um, you know, large room, no smoking, king bed. Well, most all rooms are not smoking. A lot of rooms have king beds, you know, and most people have um, hotel frequent ho hotel preferences already in, in, the, in their profiles with the, with the hotel chains. So the SI field was sitting there basically in most cases not being used at all. And it was already designed to transmit information from the GDS to the hotel. So my push was let's leverage this. If we could put something in there and have the hotels agree to accept that as the authorization to charge the card. And that's all the billing letter did. The billing letter only serves to give the, ho to give the hotel ownership the permission to charge the card so that they are not going to be liable for using it. So this replaced it. So in Marriott's case, with this, we have virtually, we have no need of a physical letter to the hotel. We still can generate, we still generate the letter in situ so that it's there for tracking purposes, for filing purposes, should anybody need it. But as far as as far as the traveler agency and the hotel, this satisfies the whole um, transmittal, transmittal of the authorization. And guess what? This is not gonna get lost. You're not gonna have and you know, sending it to somebody's email who is not working on Friday night. So nobody knows where the letter is. So this eliminates all of that. So it is my hope that this gets widely accepted and pushed out. And I think um, using this, using with, with, along with the GDS, we have virtually leaped ahead, leapt ahead in, 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 in direct billing. Yeah, thank you for that. And what I'm showing now is the PMS side of it. So this is what the front desk person would see 
pulling up the reservation. And Troy, I know you're multi-GDS. So Chris had mentioned Sabre GDS, which I know you also use, but you use other another GDS system as well. And this this will work for you for all GDS. Yeah, that is correct. And, and as Chris stated earlier, also because we're on a multi-GDS agency, the setup of this virtual pay system through Grass Pay is simple. It's very simplistic on the integration so that it does work um, inside of multiple GDSs and you don't need to have a mid office tool in order for it to work either. You can actually sit it on top of the GDS and it auto um, issues the tickets, auto issues the cards itself. So um, it works both ways. Uh, we have it going very, very well in WorldSpan and we have it going very well over on our Sabre side as well. Thank you for pointing that out because I want to make sure the audience understands that we do work with all the GDSs. And, and so if you are being either booked on a specific GDS or you're the TMC as an audience member and you're using multi-GDS, we are, we are GDS agnostic, if you will. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about our reconciliation. Um, I think reconciliation is a very important point. This is something that when we show the reporting from our grass pay portal and our reconciliation report, we have lots of compliments from the corporations and they, they know that this is something that they need, you know, really quite a bit. So wanting to talk a little bit about reconciliation and what this has solved um, for you, Chris, or Troy, from your clients, so they can see much of the data that they need to see when it comes to um, the reporting for the virtual cards. Uh, Troy, why don't I start with you and, and, and some of the benefits that you have seen when it comes to uh, the reconciliation reporting. Yes, so as, as you all know out there in the TMC world, our hardest data to report on is hotel data because normally all we have is booking data and we don't have actual transactional data for hotels in our back office. Grass pay changes that for us with the reconciliation tool that because we're getting actual transaction data in these reports coming back. And as you can see on the report that Stacy has on the screen, that's the actual charge of the hotel fee on charge on this report. So that now your clientele, you can actually do that report for them what their actual charges are um, for their hotel and what their actual ready, you know, hotel spend is going to be now. You, you actually have their hotel spend accurately with this reconciliation report at the end of the year. That's one of the things that has been in the back of my mind, Stacey, since we started is that hotel data has been the hardest thing to report back to clients. And, and this part of the reconciliation tool does two things for us and, and, and for the client as well. We get to see their actual hotel spend at the end of the year and they get a true reconciliation of their, of their, their spend. Great points. And Chris, I know that the third level data was really important to your group and being able to track what we call from a travel side UDIDs. In the banking world, they call them UDFs, but they're truly user defined codes. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, what was important for for Disney and, and being able to have a lot of data points tracked? Well, you know, if you if I would definitely like to say your report has 99 possible fields right and the beauty uh, i believe I, I like about uh, your system your grass pay is the ability for it to read and write the pnr so which yeah. means that i i load up that pnr with multiple data points that i can collect to support that booking so i'm able to tell a finance officer who traveled the day they traveled why they traveled the project number, the code, the color of the bathroom, any any information <laughs> that they want to collect on that trip, they can collect. So I have a PNR that I have five hotels. I have five lines of information going across the board, telling me everything I need to know about that stay. So a finance officer can look at a look at the report and say, I know this person was supposed to go to San Antonio. Why do I have a hotel charge from Dallas? You know, and be able to question that. At the same time, because we have the actual charges, we can pay that bill and then worry about errors or inaccurate travel on the back end. 
and then request a refund from the card company if we need to, or from the hotel. But the important thing is the bill gets paid because we have all of the line by line data, not only on employee, but also on non-employee travel. I think too, what's nice uh, about the tracking that you all are doing is you're not just tracking the traveler, but you're also tracking who approved it. And and um, you're such a large corporation yes. with different booking agents, you're even tracking what agent booked it. So if you need Correct. to drill back to questions, you have a really good line item by line item report that you can research back to. And then it's historical. So we can go back two years, three years, and you know, that trip that, you know, the purpose of that trip, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think we've definitely given the audience some great things to think about. Um, just out of curiosity, is there any other points that you'd like to make of how it's gotten better or anything that the audience should take away if they're going to get started on virtual pay, you know, a payment, you know, what are things for them to, you know, really have knowledge about before embarking on an implementation? Um, I would say not jumping into it blindly. What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? What are your pain points? And dream up whatever you want to dream up to make this make the system work for you. Because I have found that um, you know I didn't start as we are today. You know we went from a simple reservation to now having um, SI field been written out um, for for billing letter. So dream dream and and you know. Put your desires out in paper, discuss with grasp, do the research, speak to your finance officers, get the buy-in from, from, from your C-suite, and um, you know, look at reconciliation first and foremost. That's your selling point to your, 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 your higher ups. You know, I can save you money by paying that bill on time. Start there. Troy, how about you? What what are your thoughts on you know, some things that the TMC audience members might need to know about before they get started or any pain points that they should realize so they can um, have an easier implementation on their end? Yeah, I think for me, it was it was it was learning a lot about the different platforms out there and then learning which one suited you best. And when I started my research with Mike Duffy some years ago on Grass Pay, I knew that eventually it was going to be the leader in the virtual card process simply because of all the homework um, that I did up front. And I think, you know, when we look at where grass pay is, like Chris said, it's it's there's still platforms out there that are, that are being used, but none of them are being used in the manner in which grass pay can deliver to the hotel and make it simplistic. Even for your frontline agents, they have no work added to them by adding this product. There's no additional work. Um, that's being brought in-house so that you have to account for another FTE in order to support this. You don't. It's automated. So Well, and, and for the agency, Troy, you, you're eliminating manual work, creation of that letter. It's, it's absolutely gone, gone away. The other thing I'd throw out there is something that I'm getting ready to start testing it on is because we do a lot of meeting and incentive trips for our clients. I'm going to start trying to use our virtual setup with Grass Pay to pay for incentive trips for clients. And I, I because I think it's, it's gonna be an easier um, space uh, than having them us call the hotel and try to do it the old fashioned way. I think we're gonna be able to uh, utilize this within that, that wall too of, of incentive trips for clients, or even some leisure trips when people wanna prepay their hotel. So we're gonna we're gonna look at throwing it in there too and see how it works, but I, I, cause I really do think there's another avenue outside of the corporate world where grass pays could be used. There's our customers always pushing us, always, always thinking outside the box. We love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I wanted to see if there were any chat questions. Peter, is could you uh, look over the chat and see if there's some questions we might be able to answer? You got it. We have a fair amount. First question from Susan Baker. How would this apply to see? that is still in person and not an travel agency because it seems more applicable to actual accounts we service more than us as an agency. 
Well, I think that we uh, can provide a lot of different solutions for you from an agency side we talk with the agency if the agency wants to hold the credit line and provide this as a service by charging either you know, from a transaction fee standpoint or a monthly fee to the corporation for servicing them. So we do have our TMC clients, and, and Troy was giving that example of him, his agency does have their own credit line for facilitation of travel for a specific client. Uh, we find our agencies that do government travel, do maybe uh, hospital travel, they will sometimes have the credit line. Uh, and then we also will see very often uh, the corporation having the credit line. So Susan, we could definitely talk one-on-one -on, -one on some ideas of that your needs would be from an agency standpoint. Good question. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Next question is from Matthew. What would you say to travel managers who are hesitant about having too many products and want to streamline global processes? Our company already has a virtual our payment provider, which has no issues at all with reconciliation, fraud, or monthly payment from our finance, but it doesn't necessarily have the capabilities that was mentioned to grasp technologies. Is the integration already established system complicated and costly? Well, definitely not costly. So we can definitely talk one on one when it comes to the solution that might be best for your corporate account when it comes to maybe a credit line, the banking institution they would work with. Uh, so from a, a cost perspective, I think we are very, very reasonable, uh, especially to our TMC marketplace. When it comes to, you know, really having another solution that you're educated about that you have in your arsenal, I think as an industry, we always have to be cautious about having a one trick pony. Whenever we have one solution that is solving for the complete marketplace at all times, that's when sometimes we as a travel provider get burned. And we've seen that over the years. So I think having the education of what Grass Pay is doing and seeing our different advantages and really having that in your arsenal that if A, the one that you're using now does not make your client happy, that happens, you'll have another opportunity. Or B, there might be some pieces in our solution like the reconciliation and having multiple data points that's going to solve for that specific client. We also will do scoping with your client if they need specific types of reporting, which is what we did with, with Chris's group. We actually worked with our reconciliation report and massaged it back so it could go back into their ERP. That's something that our company as a travel reporting expert can do for a client. And that we live in the world of yes at GRASP rather than having a very tight solution that is only good for specific data points, for example. So Matthew, happy to talk to you uh, at, a, at another time on more specifics of showing you uh, our solution as a whole. Thanks again, Stacy. Uh, here's a two-part question from Diane. Does this only work for airfare and hotels at this point? If so, what do, uh, what do companies do for alternate travel payments? And do you still offer corporate cards for those instances? Next question is, what regions is this largely accepted in at this time? Sure, so the first question is um, as far as, you know, being able to have uh, different travel categories, we are starting to work on a car offering. We just wanna make sure the acceptance is there. So we're bringing in some conversations with some car rental companies, also with some specific corporate accounts that have relationships with that car rental company so we can do some testing to make sure the acceptance is there. We don't want to provide you to a product that we know is going to work on the reservation booking side, but your traveler is going to have challenges. No one's happy if they're at a rental car desk and can't get a car, especially in today's times where I know rental cars can be you know, challenging. If you, if you don't have a successful reservation, getting a car can be a, much of a challenge. Uh, and, number two, and Stacey, yeah, I let, yeah, let me inter interject there. The one, yes, the one thing about going outside, um, um, for especially with car rental company, um, think of the agent. I'm the agent. I am booking in the GDS. 
for the airline, I have the credit card to issue the airline ticket. For the hotel, I have the ability to pass the guarantee for the hotel to charge. The car booking as it stands today, I'm not sending a credit card. You know, so yes, we theoretically you can handle car rentals with a virtual card. The problem with today's GDSs, I am not transmitting that virtual card as an agent making that booking. So when you when we are looking at, in my opinion, when we are looking at solutions, we want to take into consideration and start with the technology that we have today and build on that instead of going out and trying to do something that's going to take uh, the agent away from that from that um, from that uh, booking. My whole philosophy in putting out new programs and new stuff is I do not want to increase the workload on the agent. That's my mantra. Anything I put out must not increase the work of the agent. So just a word of caution on that. Thank you, Chris. I, I agreed. But we we are working on on offering car rental and some other travel court categories in the next handful of months with some specific clients for beta testing. So more to come on that. So it's a great question. And uh, your other question on global acceptance, you know, what we do is we work with our grass pay clients on the banking institutions that are going to best fit what areas of travel they're going to, whether they're mainly in North America or they are going to be going to lots of different countries and making sure the acceptance is there. So, you know, really having some global banks as partners, which we do have, and having the acceptance very high with those global bank offerings. So we can certainly talk one-on-one -on, -one on our banking opportunities. Our banking offerings are are always changing. We're adding to our our suite of banks and virtual card providers. So um, we can have a conversation on what might work best for your corporate accounts. Awesome. Next question from Michelle. Many hotels do not have faxes any longer. How are you dealing with that issue? And how are you handling hotels in Las Vegas? Well, I could tell you about the communications that we're doing. So today, we're besides faxing, we are secure emailing the property. And so we will do a secure email to the property. We are doing our SI data flow and we are finishing off our certified development for any hotels that are connected to certified. Um, as far as the, the Las Vegas bookings, because we do put cards that have the spend for the booking amount, as far as I have been involved, I have not found challenges with Las Vegas hotels because there is the spend for the amount and there is padding put to the cards and tolerances that those Las Vegas hotels would require. But I will let our panelists uh, chime in on this. I I'm, I'm, didn't know if you had any experience with that as well. The MCC codes, the merchant code is, 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 the, is what typically at times is an issue uh, because some of the some of the hotels carry the a casino uh, merchant code so so that's about the only issues we get once in a while and i i believe that it's the booking issue with vegas too because a vegas requires a virtual card to be sent to them 14 days prior to check-in. So that's usually the, the, the issue that comes up with virtual cards in Vegas. And we have our set to be sent to them at, on that when we set up our, our first delivery for Vegas and Orlando, I believe we have it set up for that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw in one other point there. Um, our preferred hotels are preferred hotels because we need our requirements for a preferred hotel and if you're a preferred hotel from for, for our company, you do not we do not we do not accept a 14 day uh, requirement. So it really depends on 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 the program you have and and the hotels you have lined up. Yeah. And and accepting our virtual pro pay program is one of our conditions. Well, thank both of you. That is, those are great suggestions and answers. I think that was very helpful. I do want to say we've hit the last of our time here today. Um, I, if there's more questions, Peter, what I'd like to do is I will take those questions on and answer them directly to the person that's asked them. 
And uh, who knows, maybe some of the chat questions will turn into a whole nother webinar. I think our panelists were phenomenal. Uh, and, and really, I, I, it was great to have uh, you all attend and be a part of this today. So I th think you, uh, I hope you felt it, that it was time well spent. And I do. Thank you, Stacey. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you both very much for your time and, and great answers and great insight. And with that, we'll say goodbye. Bye now. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.